So when we're doing a circle skirt, we need two sets of measurements. We need the waist measurement for our model or dress form, and we need to determine the length that we want to make the skirt. Now we can always modify the length and the hem of the skirt, but we definitely need the waist measurement. Now I'm working with my half scale form, so I'm going to measure around her waistline right at 14 inches for mine. You will have different measurements for yours. If you're working on full scale or on an actual model, obviously you'll have much larger measurements, but I'm gonna mark down 14 inches as my waist measurement. And while I'm here on the form, I'm just gonna get an idea of how long I might wanna make this skirt. I'll go with 10 inches for this particular form. Of course, if you're doing full scale, you'll have some different measurements to work with. Okay, I'm now in Clo, and I'm going to start working on making this circle skirt. Um, as you'll notice, while using this um, screen capture software, whenever you can see my mouse hovering around whenever I click on anything with my left mouse button. So that's a left mouse button click. You should see a yellow icon, the little yellow blip show up. So you know I'm using my left mouse click. My right mouse click will be indicated with a blue cursor. And of course you'll see little contextual menus pop up because every time you right click in one of the windows, a little menu is going to pop up. My middle mouse button click for like panning around both of the windows, you'll see that with a green color when I click on my middle mouse button. So left, right, and middle mouse button. You'll also see keystrokes show up down here. So if I change my um, view of my camera or anything, you should see a keystroke show up in that lower right-hand corner. So be on the lookout for um, changes in my cursor and my keystrokes that'll show up here. I'm going to move kind of quickly through this because there's a lot of material to cover, but you can always re-watch this content. First thing I want to do is get an avatar, and I want an avatar that's going to match the waistline on my half-scale form. Now my half-scale was a 14-inch waistline, and to my knowledge there are no half-scale avatars in CLO, so we'll be working in full-scale in CLO, and then print the patterns at half-scale to then fit onto our half-scale forms. I'm going to open up my library that should be docked over on the left hand side. Yours may already be open. Mine is currently docked. So I'm just going to click left click once on the term on the word library and it should open up the library here. And you probably see something that looks like this in the garment folder by default. Um, if you already have the library open, great. You don't have to do anything. But if it is not currently open, you can click on it once to undock it from the left hand side of the screen. Double click on the avatar folder. Double click on the avatar folder. Double click on the female V2, female version two folder. And then pick whichever one of the avatars you would like. I'm gonna go with Camilla and I'm gonna double click on Camilla to load her into the 3D window. You can choose whichever avatar you prefer. While I'm in here, I want to make sure that her waistline is going to match my half scale form. Now my half scale was 14 inches. If I double that, that should be 28 inches. So I need to make sure her full scale waistline is 28 inches or as close as possible to that. There should be a tool right down here called the edit measure tool. Yours might look a little bit different, but if you don't see it, it should dock right here. You can click and hold to find the edit measure tool. Yours might already be there. Be advised that any of the icons that have little triangles in the lower right hand corner, there's something hiding underneath them. So anytime you're looking at any of the icons, including these in the 2D window, there's always something hiding underneath if there's an icon with a little triangle in the lower right hand corner. So choose your edit measure tool, looks like a tape measure with a little mouse attached to it. You'll see her hair and shoes will disappear because in case you need to make measurements on the ankles or the foot or around the head, the hair and shoes can get in your way. So those will automatically hide themselves. As you hover over each of the dotted lines, you'll see them highlight in blue. And with my mouse hovered over the waistline, I'm going to left click 
to bring up the measurement that is already built into the software onto this avatar. She currently has a 24 inch waist and I need 28 inches. So this size for my avatar is not gonna work. So while I'm still in the avatar female version two folder over here in my library, I'm gonna double click the size folder. So you should find the size folder and double click that to open it up. Now it's a little hard to tell which of these folders are which because we're seeing large icons for the folders. I recommend going to this icon here. It looks like a couple of lines with some dots next to them. That's your list view. Click on that and you should be able to see a list view of all of your folders. I'm going to open the US ASTM Missy Curvy folder. Double click on the ASTM Missy Curvy folder. That's gonna be closest to a standard dress form with a snatched waist and really rounded hips. And I'm gonna choose one of these files, one of these size files to change my avatar size. I'm gonna try the size six, the Missy Curvy six. I'm gonna double click on that and wait until she changes proportions and check the waist measurement again. She's currently sitting at 26.9, so essentially 27 inch waist, still too small for me. I need 28 inches. So I'm gonna try the next size up. And there we go, 27.9. That's about as close as I'm gonna to get to a 28 inch waist without having to do any kind of crazy stuff and make major adjustments. So I'm gonna go with the Missy Curvy size eight. You will need to use one of these sizes that best matches the waistline from your half scale. So remember to measure your half scale form, double that size so we get to full scale. So multiply it by two and then find which one of these Missy Curvy sizes best match at the waistline for that. I'm gonna choose this little, click on this little left facing arrow up here next to the library term, click that little arrow, and that will dock the library back over to the left hand side. So I have a little bit more real estate to work with here. Before we go any further, there's one thing I want you to do in preparation for this particular circle skirt, because what will happen when you're drafting in full scale and you're adding ease and whatnot to waistbands, Oftentimes the waistbands will sag and fall off of the avatar as they're moving or posing. It's difficult to mimic the strength and structure of interfacing and interlinings um, with the waistbands in the software. So to, I'm gonna show you a little trick for having your waistband stay on your avatars and you can still draft your waistbands at full scale with ease and everything else involved. I'm going to zoom in at the waistline of my avatar just using my scroll wheel to zoom in and holding, clicking and holding my middle mouse button to pan. I'm going to focus right here at her waistline. And over here where I got my edit measure tool, just below it there should be a basic circumference tool, should be some kind of measurement tool underneath here. It may be slightly different depending on what uh, measurement tool tape measure tool was used last, but I want to click and hold whatever this icon happens to be and choose the basic circumference measure. So click and hold whatever this is and choose the basic circumference measure avatar tool. So it lo should look like a circular tape measure. I already know the measurement of her waist, but I wanna create my own custom waistline measure and you'll see why in a moment. Just below this line, as close as I can get to it, just below that line, I'm gonna click, left click once to let the system know I wanna start measuring the circumference in this area. Before I click again, I'm gonna hold down the shift key on my keyboard, hold down the shift key that will constrain my axes horizontally or vertically. Now, I wanna constrain it horizontally, so with my shift key held down, I'm gonna click one more time, just a left click somewhere over here to the right, and a third click again. I'm still holding my shift key. If you release the shift key, you'll see that measurement go up and down and move all over the place. Hold down that shift key and click one more time. So that's one click, hold down the shift key, two clicks, hold down the shift key, three clicks. I'll show you that one more time. Single click as close as I can to the waistband, hold down shift, second click, hold down shift, third click and I can release the shift key and I'm done. I've now created my own custom waistline measurement right there. You can see it's close to 28 inches. It's already giving me that measurement, which is great. 
I'm going to use this in just a second. It's going to help keep our waistband up. Just going to zoom out so we can see our girl. I'm going to go back to my select move tool just so we get rid of all those dotted lines from those measurement tools. So let's go ahead and make a waistband for her. So regardless of whether you're whatever kind of skirt you're making, we're going to have to put a waistband on it. So I'm going to make a waistband. She has a 28 inch waist. Your measurements may be different. So please use the measurements regarding your specific avatar and your um, dress form. Mine has a 28 inch waist and I want to add an inch for ease. So I'm going to create a 29 inch waistband and I'm just going to make a simple rectangular waistband. I'm going to make that using the rectangle tool over here in the 2D window. You may see the polygon tool. Remember that little icon has a little arrow in the lower right hand corner. So click and hold that icon and you'll see a couple of other tools pop up. And I'm going to choose the rectangle tool. You'll see it's the letter S by default on our keyboard. So make sure you're using the rectangle tool and click somewhere in the 2D pattern window. Single left click in the 2D pattern window and it'll bring up this contextual menu asking me, well, what size would you like to make that rectangle? I'm going to make mine 29 inches. Remember that's 28 inch waistline plus one inch for ease. And I'm going to make my waistband one inch tall. Now you can make your waistband between one to one and a half inches tall and still keep it as a simple rectangle. But if you make it any taller than that, inch and a quarter, two inches or more, you will have to make a contoured waistband that will require using the bodice slopers to then create your contoured waistband. So anything more than an inch and a half and you're gonna to have to make a contoured waistband. So I'm gonna keep mine simple, 29 inches wide by one inch tall and I'm gonna leave the rest of these as default and click okay. Give my computer a second to catch up and create that piece of fabric for me and I'm all set. If I zoom out here, you can see it's set itself here in the 3D window. Now I want to get this waistband wrapped around her waist and to do that I'm going to open up my arrangement points. Over here on the 3D window you'll see a couple of menus that are docked over here on the left hand side of the 3D menu and as you hover over each of them a couple of more icons will pop up. What I want is the avatar display menu as I hover over this looks like a little person with an eye on it. You'll see a couple more icons show up just to the right of that icon. I want the second icon. It's five little blue dots and it's the show arrangement points icon. So again, the avatar display menu and the show arrangement points. You'll see shift F is the keyboard shortcut for that. So I'm going to click on this icon and you'll see a whole bunch of blue dots show up around the avatar. With my select move tool in the 3D window, my active tool, I'm going to make sure that my waistband is selected. It should be highlighted yellow. And I'm going to hover over these little blue dots that have shown up on the avatar. You'll see as the waistband kind of conforms to each of these blue dots, it kind of wraps around certain parts of the body. I want to place it near her waistband, but before I do that, notice what happens, that little gray outline that shows you an idea of what that waistband's going to do. Notice how that gray outline kind of clips through her hips because she's got a different shape now. She has very rounded hips. That waistband is going to clip through her hips. It's nothing terrible, but it could cause a little confusion if you're not familiar with working with polygons instead of fabric. So to avoid this clipping, I'm going to place the waistband just below her bust. That way it's nice clearance. I get all the way around the um, middle of the torso, the trunk of the body without it clipping through anywhere. So I'm going to click on this blue dot right in the center of her body just below her bust and you should see that waistband automatically snap and remember with the right mouse button right click and hold you can tumble around and see that waistband starting to wrap itself around the middle of her body. So I just make sure that this waistband piece is selected it needs to be active yellow and then click once at that little blue dot just in the center of her body below the bust. I'm going to turn off my arrangement points because I don't need to see them anymore. And I'm going to use my keyboard shortcut to do that, Shift F to turn those off, and those should be good to go. I'm now going to sew my waistband together just so that it is put together nicely. I'm going to use my segment sewing tool. It's like a little sewing machine with a line and two dots. If you don't see it here in the 2D window, click and hold. It's probably hiding under this M to N segment sewing. We want the segment sewing tool, that's N right there, 
I'm going to use that. You can also find it in the 3D viewport, 3D, win 3D window over here. And I'm going to sew in my 3D window. I'm just going to select this small edge of my rectangle, click once, click again on the other side. Make sure your sewing relationship lines are not crisscrossed. You don't want anything looking like this or like that. Make sure we got nice parallel lines. Click once, click again, tumble around to make sure that those relationship lines are correct and we should be good to go. Now before I simulate anything, I want to use that circumference measurement that I just made to my advantage. There's a number of ways of stiffening the fabric or attaching it to the avatar. You can pin it onto the avatar, you can strengthen the fabric, you can give it a different default fabric that's a little bit stronger than the, the um, you can give it a different fabric preset that's a little stronger than the default fabric, but I'm going to choose this tool that's called the Attach to Measurement tool. Down here again in the 3D window where it says edit measure, I'm going to click and hold that icon and you should find that attach to measure avatar tool. Again, it's right here. Click and hold whatever that icon happens to be. It might be the edit measure tool. Click and hold and you'll find the attach to measure avatar tool. Now this will only work on custom made measurements, which is why we made that circumference measurement in the first place. It will not attach anything to these default measurements, these um, dotted lines that already come with the avatar, you have to make your own custom measurement, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Now what I want to do, I want to place my waistband at her waist. It's assuming the waistband is going up towards the top of her bodice. So I want to hover over, you'll see as I hover over different segments of the waistband, they highlight in blue. I want to hover over the lower edge of my waistband and click that. You'll see it highlights as red to so say this is the active segment, the active edge that you're using. And then I want to hover over that circumference measurement I made. That also will highlight blue. Left click and you will see that turn red as well. So now I've got the lower edge of my waistband highlighted red. Remember to click on that. Just to undo to show that one more time click on the lower edge of the waistband that highlights red to indicate that that's the edge that the system is going to use and then click on that waist that new waistline measurement that we made earlier on now when i go to simulate you're going to see that waistband snap to that measurement and anytime this avatar moves it's not going to go anywhere it's going to stay attached to that measurement let me show you what happens if we don't use that attach to measurement tool. So I've removed that. I've just undo and undone some of my work. You'll see there's no more red lines. So it's no longer attaching anything to that measurement tool. And I'm going to simulate that. You see how it flops down. It's got a lot of curvature to it. It just kind of flops down onto the body. As soon as we add the skirt to this, the skirt, the weight of the skirt is going to drag this waistband down and she may end up losing her skirt entirely when she's walking. So to avoid that, we use that attach to measurement tool, click on the lower edge of the waistline, click on that circumference measurement we made, simulate, and suddenly it snaps right into place and that's not going anywhere. Anywhere she moves around, anytime she poses or does any motion, that waistband is going to stay hugged right to her waist. Now on an actual person, that's what it should do. If an actual person was wearing the garment, that waistband would sit snug, snug at the waist with a little bit of ease for breathing room. But this is one of the tricks for working in CLO because polygons don't interact with these solid forms the same way fabric interacts with the human form. I'm going to go back to my forward facing view. I'm going to press two on my keyboard just to get a nice forward facing view on my girl here. And we've got the start to our waistband. Now let's make a facing for that waistband. This is going to get a little bit tricky. So just do your best to follow along. And if you need to rewind the video and watch it a second time. First thing I want to do to create a facing for my waistband, and I'm going to make a separate facing. I don't recommend doing a folded facing right now unless you feel really confident with working um, with the folding tools here in CLO. Otherwise, we're just going to make a separate waistband, make a separate facing. 
I'm going to zoom in on my waistband here. And so I can see the inside of it because that's where I would place my facing. I'm going to hide my avatar. There's a few ways to do that. I can right click on my avatar and choose hide avatar. Or I can go up into these little menus that are docked up here and that avatar display menu that we used before for the arrangement points. That first icon is the show avatar button. You click on it, avatar disappears, click on it again, she comes back. So I'm just going to hide the avatar. You can use whichever method you like to do that. She'll disappear from both, both windows. And now we can just work with our waistband separately. And we're going to place a facing inside of the waistband. So to do that, I'm just going to right click on my waistband and copy. Right click somewhere in the 2D window and paste. You can also do control C, control V. I'll show you how to do that as well. Select the piece, your waistband piece, control C, control V, and just make a duplicate of it. There it is, it's sitting down there. I am going to sew my facing to my waistband. Now the sewing relationships that you create in Clo do not always match what you do in the actual garment. You'll see with more advanced garments, I tend to use little tricks to sew my center fronts together. Even though I'm using buttons, you would never actually sew your center fronts together if you had a jacket or something. But sometimes the simulations in the software don't behave as you would imagine with actual fabric. So you have to do some extra work to make it look good in the computer that you wouldn't actually do on your fabric when you're actually sewing the garment. Just follow along. So I wanna sew my facing to my waistband and just follow along with what I'm about to do. I'm gonna use my segment sewing tool and I want to sew the top edge of my waistband to the bottom edge of my facing. And you'll see why in just a second. My facing is gonna get turned around. It's gonna get flipped around because we don't want the right side of our facing to go to the wrong side of our waistband. We want the wrong sides together so that the facing is clean finished on the inside of the garment. So I'm gonna click once on the upper edge of my waistband and click once on the lower edge of my facing. So that's taken care of. It's gonna look weird for a second, but just trust me. I'm gonna go over to my select move tool over here in the 3D window. I'm gonna click on my facing, click once on the facing to make sure it's selected. Right click and choose superimpose under. So we sewed the top of the waistband to the bottom of the facing with the segment sewing tool. We go over to the select move tool in the 3D window, select the facing, make sure it's highlighted, right click on it and choose superimpose under. Let the system do what it's gonna do. It's gonna use that sewing relationship line to orient the facing properly. And if I zoom way in here, you can see little green lines. There's my sewing relationship, the top edge of my waistband to the bottom edge of my facing. And it automatically flips my facing around. Now, if it makes a little bit more sense, you can also rotate your facing piece in the 2D window if it helps to orient those pieces a little bit more. But now we've got the right side of our facing and the right side of our waistband going in the correct direction. I'm gonna go ahead and sew the other two edges together just so they don't go flopping all over the place when I go to simulate. Going back to my segment sewing tool and in my 3D window, these are the two edges that aren't currently sewn. You can see there's no sewing relationships between them. I'm gonna click once on the waistband, once on the facing and sew those together. So your sewing relationship should look like mine. You should have your waistline, your waistband and your facing and you should see sewing relationships similar to what I have here. You should also have sewing relationships along these short edges. This edge should be sewn to that edge on your waistband. This edge should be shown to that edge on your facing. This is another one of those things when you're actually making a waistband, you wouldn't actually sew the center back seams together. You'd put a closure of some kind in there. But for the sake of working with polygons to make it look pretty, we're going to sew those together to start off with. Next thing I want to do is name these because these are two identical pieces and I'm going to lose track of which is which. So I'm going to select my waistband in my 2D window using my transform pattern tool. Make sure you're using the transform pattern tool. Click on your waistband. 
And over here in the property editor at the very top, you'll find name. And I'm going to name it waistband. Wait, waistband. I'm going to select my facing and give that a name. You can name with this whatever you'd like. But I'm going to name this one waistband and this one waistband facing, just so I know what's going on, which one is which. Okay. I'm going to add an extension to my waistband because when you actually sew your samples, you're going to want to leave the waistband open and you need some kind of way of closing it. If you decide to do um, a wire hook and eye or something like that, you want the two center backs butted up against each other with a wire hook and eye closure, you're welcome to do that. Um, we're not going to be putting any closures on these samples, but think in terms of making this as an actual garment. I'm going to place an extension. You might want to do that as well. To do that, I'm going to have to make some changes to a couple of pieces here because these are currently sewn together and I need to make one of these center back seams longer to add that extension. So I'm going to do that. To figure out which edge is which, because right now both edges look the same, it's just a rectangle so it looks symmetrical, I want to extend this rightmost edge. So this edge I want to make, oh I'm sorry, I want to extend my leftmost edge. Doesn't really matter which one you do. I prefer to keep my right edge flush and make my left edge extended. That's just what I like to do, but you're welcome to do whatever you'd like. This is your garment. So I want to extend this leftmost edge, but I'm not sure which one is the leftmost edge in my 2D window. So I want to click somewhere using that select move tool. I want to click somewhere along that leftmost edge and you'll see a corresponding blue dot show up in your 2D window. So this is a good way to orient yourself between the two windows, especially when you're working with pieces like this that look identical, that look symmetrical. You can click anywhere and that corresponding vertex will highlight in the 2D window. So you can get an idea of where things are and where you are in space. So this is the edge I want to extend. I'm going to go ahead and do that. This is going to look, this is not going to look pretty. I'm just going to tell you right now. It's going to look kind of crazy for a second. So this edge I want to extend. I'm using the edit pattern tool. If you don't see it, it's probably docked somewhere underneath here. So click and hold and you'll find that edit, edit pattern tool, that Z by default, and select, I'm going to select this left, this edge right here, which corresponds to the leftmost, the left side of my waistband. I'm going to right click on that selected edge. Once it's selected and highlighted yellow, I'm going to right click on it and offset pattern outline. I want to extend this by one inch in full scale but I don't want to lose where this center back line is. I want to remember that's my center back seam. So if I'm going to sew a, an actual closure on full scale, I know where to place my hook and eye or my hook and bar. So to keep that line intact, I'm going to create an internal line where that initial line was. So extend one inch, offsets is, stays at zero, and create internal line is checked. Press OK. So it's going to make an extension. It's hard to see it, but it's in there. What you will see are these sewing relationship lines have now moved. If I go to the edit sewing tool, you'll see that this sewing relationship line is still attached to this one. So now it's going to try to pull this edge all the way over here and it's going to do weird stuff. It's going to make my waistband bigger, which I don't want. So I'm actually going to delete. I'm going to select with that edit sewing tool select this sewing relationship line right here on this edge, delete it, go back to the segment sewing tool and sew that internal line to this other edge over here. So the internal line sews back to that original edge. You might see a little bit of that extra fabric kind of peeking out over here. That's my extension. That's where my hooks and eyes and all whatnot would go in a full garment. And I'm going to want to do the same thing on my facing because that's going to have to be extended as well. But I'm not sure which edge I want to extend. So again, I'm going to go to my select move tool. I know that I want to extend this edge of my waistband corresponding to this edge of my facing on the inside. So I click there and I can see, okay, it's this edge that needs to extend. I can do that the edit pattern tool, edit pattern tool. That's the edge I want. I'm going to zoom in where that blue dot is. 
select that edge, highlight it yellow, right click, oh, oh sorry, right click, offset pattern outline, extend, one inch, same amount, created internal line is checked, click OK, change this, go to edit sewing, select this sewing relationship because now it's moved the sewing relationship lines, delete that, segment sewing tool, go to that internal line and connect it to that line over there. I'm going to simulate this and hope for the best. So there's our little extensions kind of flying out, They're flying all over the place. I'm going to do my best to just simulate, hold my select move tool and just tuck them inside. See if we can get those to tuck inside of there. I don't like dealing with extensions in Clo, but if you're not drafting them, you might have a hard time keeping track of them in your final pattern. Usually I won't put any extensions or seam allowances into my garments in Clo. I'll just add them later. I'm just twisting this around her waist. And we can ensure that these pieces stay attached with the edit sewing tool. I'm going to go to this sewing relationship line, the green one that's attaching my waistband to my facing. You can click and drag the dots on either end of the sewing relationship lines and that will extend those lines. Same thing here. These are the sewing relationships that are holding the facing and the waistline together. I'm going to drag those dots. This is not necessary but it might help keep these pieces from flopping around. There they go. Not perfect but it's a little bit better than it was. So you don't have to move those, just know that your edit sewing tool, you can do a lot with this. You can delete the sewing, you can reverse sewing, you can extend sewing, reduce it, so you can experiment with gathering things. But I just did that so that my extensions wouldn't go flying all over the place. Let's turn our avatar back on. There's the avatar display menu and show avatar. Waistband's a little bit half it's a little bit cattywampus, so I'm going to simulate and drag it back into place. Notice how it doesn't deviate from that waistline measurement. It's not going anywhere, so we know that that waist, waistband is going to sit there looking pretty no matter what we do with this avatar. I'm going to go back to my front view, stop my simulation just so my computer doesn't explode, and I'm going to press 2 on my keyboard to go back to front view. And now we got a nice forward-facing view of our girl. She's got a waistband. She's got an extension on that waistband. She's got a facing on the waistband. So most of that is taken care of. Last thing I want to do before moving on to the skirt is saving the file. We don't want to lose all the work we just did. We, we named the pieces. We made all kinds of facings. We attached the waistband to the avatar. I'm going to go to File, Save As Project. I cannot stress how important this is. If you choose File, Save Project, what will happen is this default modelist project, which is the default project that opens every time you open Clo, you'll overwrite this. And every time you open the software, this is what you're going to see. Not to mention trying to find this file, it's nested somewhere in the folders on the computer. It's really difficult to find. You do not want to overwrite this. Keep this as it is. We want to make our whole new file, give it a, our own file name. So go to File, Save As Project. It's Control Shift S. Can file, Save As Project. When you save a project file, it will automatically save the avatar, the size information, and all of the patterns that you've created. Um, there are a couple of different save I options but by default, you should be saving as a project file, not a garment file or an avatar file or anything else, a project file. Navigate to a folder where you can find this. You can put it onto your Dropbox, put it onto an external drive, whatever you'd like. Give it a name. I'm going to name it Circle Skirt. If you want to put a particular file naming convention on there, you can. I like to put a date on there. 
So I this is going to be March 2023. And I'm putting it into my 410 folder so I know where to find it and click save. I'm just going to save that file. Give it a second. You'll see the file name changes in the 3D window. It's now got your file name .zprj. And if you navigate to that file folder, you will find the .zprj file. This is a proprietary file type. It's a Clo project file with an avatar and garments and whatnot into in it. And you'll also find a .png file. It's always gonna save a thumbnail of your work. So even though you can't see what the garment is from the ZPRJ icon, it will save an image, a little thumbnail of your work. So you can keep track of which product, which project is which. And every time you save the project, it will update this thumbnail. So you can see how the, you can see which garment this is when you go into your files. Cause a lot of the time you'll go into these file form uh, folders and you'll have a ton of ZPRJ files and you're not gonna know which one is which. So give it a proper file name. So it's a little bit easier to find and keep these PNG files cause those will give you an indication of which project you're working on.